Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're working on uh, making a soft shackle. We use this soft shackle to tie our anchor bridle to our anchor chain and I'm going to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So hang in there. First I want to explain a little bit about the soft shackle. So first I'm going to undo this a little bit so we can talk about it. So you can see right here that the soft shackle has quite a bit of wear. This soft shackle has been in use for about a year, and if you saw our video about um, anchoring through a hurricane, this is actually the soft shackle that was used during that hurricane. So what happens is we have a bridle, we feed this through a link of the chain, and then Tracy will open up this end, it goes around the knot, and then it cinches down and then there's no way under pressure that this can come off and that's how it locks and you can see that it's a nice little ring but what happens is this will wear against the chain as the boat moves around and over time it'll start to wear now this particular material which is made out of 3 16 inch amsteel blue which is a synthetic um, rope that is the same strength but 80% uh, um, lighter than stainless steel cable. So if this was a steel cable, uh, the amp steel would actually be stronger and it floats, which is just absolutely amazing and it's easy to splice. So it's pretty much an ideal material. To put it into certain terms, this has a braking strength of 4,900 pounds with a usable load between 1,500 and 3,500 pounds. But look at this and you'll see that it's double thickness so it's actually double that. So this can almost withstand 10,000 pounds, uh, which is a lot stronger than a stainless steel shackle. So it's a great thing. So we're gonna rebuild this because obviously we need to replace this because of the wear. And I keep 3 16 inch Amsteel blue. I don't know if you can see, but I keep about 100 feet on the boat. I do that because of the soft shackles and also for launching our dinghy, this is the same line. So if I ever had to replace the dinghy launching cable that's on our winches, uh, I would use this. So let's start this process. First we have to make sure we have enough line for it. So I'm going to gather up the line and start setting this up and I'll be back in one second. So I'm going to use some terms that you probably are not familiar with. but you'll know about them by the end of the video. So first thing I need to do is figure out how much of this Amsteel Blue I need to make this soft shackle. The first thing that we're going to do at this end for this knot is make what's called a locking Bremel. And I'll show you how to do that, but one of the things that you need to know is that typically with Amsteel, when you are splicing it, if you're going to make a splice and, and make a loop and you're going to bury the end inside the existing line, for that to have its maximum strength, you want to bury between 20 and 30 times the um, width of the, the line. So I've got 3 16 so roughly I'm talking about burying about 6 inches in it. And so I'm going to use about 12 inches on each side and I'm going to use about another 12 inches each side for making the knot. So I've got two feet right there, plus I'm going to be using about 20 inches, double that for each side, so 40 inches. So if I take my 40 inches plus another 24 inches, I have 64 inches that I need to make soft shackle about this size. So I'm going to start that process right now and I'll be back in a second. So I've cut my line and you can see roughly about how it looks for the length. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I told you that uh, we want to bury um, about six inches. So I'm just going to take this measurement here. I'm going to go six. I need to um, feather this end just a little bit so I'm going to actually go to seven inches and I'm going to mark this and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to do seven inches and 
and that I told you I needed to feather this. And the important thing about this is when you bury a line, if I were to bury it inside here, there would be a abrupt change where this blunt cut is. So you want to have it as a soft transition so that it doesn't put extra stress in a specific spot. And so you just work your way back a little bit, pull out some strands, two at a time, and then just use a cutting board. At least that's what I do. It seems to work better with a knife. Uh, scissors sometimes don't cut very well, so I'm just going to slice off a little bit of this. There, now I have a little bit better of a taper. So I'm gonna go back to my black line here. And I use a couple tools. I have a uh, aluminum chopstick and it's just a nice blunt pointy thing that I can use to spread the strands. You can see that I'm basically going midway through. I'm just making a nice big hole so that I can pass this end back through. Just going to pass it through. What I'm going to do is make a loop that I can pass four thicknesses through of this cord. This will be tight, but I can get it through there. Now what I'm going to do is when you make a locking Bremel, so if I were just to bury this end now, it could still slide out even though this line would put friction on it. But the way I can lock this is if I take the longer end and pass it back through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a little bit. Of the line here. Get this nice and fat through there. And I'm going to pass this line through. go. So now I'm passing this through the loose end and then tightening up. Now you'll notice that when I pull on this it is completely locked. There's no way that that loop is going to loosen up. <clears throat> now that I have this locking Bremel in place I can bury the rest of this line and how I do that is I use a piece of stainless steel wire that I've looped around. And so what I do is I come down very far, way past how far this is going to bury. And I open up the weave of the line and I work it down inside the am steel blue and then I come out as close as I can right below where the line comes out again I pass it out there and then what I do is I pass a little bit of line through the end of the stainless steel loop and I want it to grip it but I don't want to make too big of a, a resistance as it flows through. So I'm going to fold it over with my finger and then pull it through. The very first little thing goes through is sometimes hard, but you can see it's pulling through right now. I'm going to pull it all the way nice and tight. I'm going to pull it out this end. And now that it's buried, I have extra line here 
I'm going to stretch it back out now. And then I'm going to use my chopstick again and use it as kind of a leverage piece to hold it. And I'm going to put a bunch of tension on it and pull it nice and tight. And so I have my first locked Bremel there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Now this side is going to be a little bit more difficult because instead of just passing a single line through, I'm going to be passing this much thicker piece through. That is definitely going to add a little bit of a challenge. However, we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to feather this end a little bit. Okay, I think that's good for right now. So I'm going to go back to my reference black spot, use my chopstick, I'm going to make a hole, get it nice and big so that I can pass this through. And sometimes if you have an issue, you can take a little piece of blue tape. This might make it easier for you. And just put a piece of tape around it to help feed it through the holes. So I'm going to get that nice and big and then feed this through. So I've got that, now I need to do the locking Bremel part, which means I have to feed this big beast through this side. This is gonna be the hard part. I'm gonna get the loop about where I want it. And then I'm gonna take my chopstick. This time I'm gonna try and get it really nice and big and wide because like I said, this is gonna be very hard to get through. I think you can see maybe I've really stretched this hole out as far as I can go. Now I'm gonna take this side up through that hole and there it goes. That worked pretty well. I'm doing my locking Bremel right now. Going to use the chopstick and tighten it up. And now it's time to bury this end. So I'm going to do the same thing again with my stainless steel wire. Through. This is when I can remove the tape. that and I, I'm going to actually trim just a little bit here just to make it a, a better transition and go back to the razor knife that's a little better so then once again I'm going to I'm going to pull this nice and smoothly out and use my chopstick one more time Okay, so let's review. Right now, I have two Bremel locked ends at the very end here. And I'll let you compare to where we are. So now what we need to do is make this loop on the end here. This is what locks around the knot. Just to remind you, I send that through and this tightens up. And when it's tightened up, I have the soft shackle. So how we do this is you can see that once again, the loop that we're making at the end here is supposed to be about the size of these two um, thicker four uh, widths of the 3 /16. And so I'm going to use 
the chopstick again. I'm going to go through these ends, make them nice and even. I'm going to pull this out nice and straight. And then once I get it completely straight, I'm going to mark the end with my Sharpie. And now I want to make this loop. So I know that the very end, I want to keep that straight. So I'm going to take my chopstick again, and I'm going to open up the weave. And as I did before, I want to widen this out as much as I can because I'm going to feed this really big end through the weave and there it comes through and I'm going to check my work again by putting the chopstick through the end and I'll use my sharpie down here and I want to confirm that I have this nice and even. So see how once I put tension on these two, there isn't any extra length. The reason we want that is when this goes around the knot, we want to make sure that these are the exact same length. And I think we're within specification there. And you can see when I pull it tight, it's almost exactly the right size. So I'm very happy with that. So the next thing is we're going to make this knot. Now, we're going to start with just a simple overhand knot, but we want to make sure that we keep this all flat and parallel, and that these are nice and even. So I'm being very careful to hold this. So then I'm going to do an overhand knot. I'm going to spin this around and send this through. going to take as many of these twists out and keep everything nice and straight. I'm holding everything as parallel as I can. And I want to make a nice compact knot where everything is nice and firm and in line. Now, if I were to do this and just leave the knot like this, you can see with just an overhand knot that there's a good chance that this knot would just slide off under the extreme pressure, particularly like during the hurricane I was talking about. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my chopstick and make sure that these are nice and big. And then I'm going to use my Sharpie and really get those nice and wounded out where those Bremel tools are. And then Tracy just came back in uh, after going grocery shopping, so the jet's going crazy. So now that I have these ends all squared away, what I'm going to do is feed the far end through these two locking bremels. And then once I get them through the locking bremels, tight fit. But just take your time and work it through. So then, now that I have these through the locking Bremel, you can see that this overhand knot can never come undone because it's being locked in place. So I'm going to take my Sharpie, put that in the knot end, and now I'm going to try and tighten this knot as evenly and symmetrically as I can so that there's no stress points in it. And I want to make this 
as small as I can. So I'm just going to work on this, tightening this up for a second. And Just keep on working the knot, trying to keep everything nice and straight. Using my Sharpie is just a pull tool. Now I can tighten this to a certain extent with just my hand, but I can tell you that once this goes on the anchor chain, it will definitely tighten up. So let me show you the finished product. So you can see that it matches very well what we did before. In action, I open up this locking end, slide the knot through, it locks on, and I have a soft shackle that is brand new. With that, I'm gonna end this video and thank you again for watching, commenting, viewing and subscribing and liking. Uh, until next week, thanks for hanging in.